Welcome back to 1700 with Jess and Jai. We're thrilled to be joined by Woody Pitney, who's just performed three of his singles live on 1700. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jai. Thank you, Jess. Thanks for having me. A really interesting <laughs> fact about you is that obviously your real name's not Woody. Uh, where did Woody come from? So Woody is uh, originally from Edward, and I guess uh, it just comes from the similar sounding Ed Wood, Woody. Classic. Yep. <laughs> no, no exciting backstory. Why did you sorry. decide to go with Woody though? Uh, I had a cousin that was also called Edward, so uh, I just made made things a little bit easier. I Shorter. <laughs> yeah. And we just heard um, three tracks from you, and two of them, a little too late, and Graveyard Girls. One's been released, and one hasn't yet. Yeah. Um, would you say your you obviously had some an older track as well? Would you say that music has progressed? Yeah, I think uh, there's definitely been um, an evolution in my songwriting and, and <coughs> improving every day, and hopefully every every track I write. Um, so, yeah, mm, fingers, and it, fingers crossed, people like yeah, the transition. And it was. Um, I think someone wrote that a little too late was a little bit darker than your previous work. Yeah, um, and I think I haven't really like steered clear of doing lighter music as you can tell from Graveyard Girls but I thought it would um, add a nice depth and a um, nice way to show my voice off as well. So Indeed. When was the point in your career I guess or early on where you thought I want to be a singer? Where, what was that moment? Um, probably several factors. I think my first ever gig that I did was at my school battle of the bands like in year 12 um, and <laughs> after that like not getting booed or um, boot off stage or throwing, you know, ha having tomatoes thrown at me, I thought maybe actually I could have a go at this and try and write some more songs. And I think from there it was kind of just this gradual growth that threw me. And did you always um, mainly want to do be a solo artist? Uh, yeah, I think I did. I like sort of, I like the whole sort of singing and playing guitar at the same time. Um, so yeah, I've always liked that idea. Mm -hmm. A magazine describes your career as. Something along the lines of uh, nothing, anything but ordinary, I think, was the wording. Could you elaborate on exactly what that means, perhaps? <laughs> um, well, I, I think they're alluding to the fact that I, um, I had a, a fair bit of time in Germany where I had a short st stint of success, um, where my song was on a TV commercial over there and um, sort of on the back of that, the song um, reached the top of the iTunes charts over in Germany and a couple of other European countries. and signed for a, a label over there and pretty unconventional in terms of you know what I was thinking my pathway would be with my music so uh, yeah definitely <laughs> not as ordinary as I would have thought yeah it's indeed. a pretty cool pathway yeah yeah, yeah. unique <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you think getting out of the Melbourne music scene and going um, overseas and into Europe sort of changed your perspective on music or opened your eyes to different styles? Yeah, definitely. And I think even just different, like how different the German music industry is um, to the Australian music industry. It's um, it's just a big world out there. So um, I, I loved loved my time over there and hopefully I'll get back over there. But Australia is a great market as well and a great industry over here. So it's something you go overseas and you realise how special some of the talent in Australia is as well. Yeah. Who are some of your influences in Australia that inspire your music or people that I guess you really like listening to or would go and see their gig in Australia? Um, good question. I probably, at the moment, I've been really getting into a lot of uh, Neil Finn and Crowded House yeah. and just trying to appreciate that art of songwriting a lot yeah. more. Um, so he's like the king in my eyes. And then um, I, I think I grew up listening to a lot of my parents' music collections. So that kind of, um, I guess, paved the way for a lot of it. So. Fleetwood Mac and Paul Kelly and um, a lot of classic artists, yeah. Good artists, Great. yeah. And um, what is your songwriting process? Usually the most conventional process will be sitting down with an acoustic guitar um, and going from there and seeing seeing where what, what sort of uh, words and, and sort of uh, melodies I can, I can get out of myself. Um, sometimes I'll sit at a piano or sit on my computer and try and come with, up with some samples. So it really does depend. Mm. Yeah. And the last song we heard, Graveyard Girls, kind of had, um, I feel like, darker lyrics, but an upbeat sound. Yeah, a bit of a juxtaposition. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great word. I was also reading an interview, the 60 second interview with Beat Magazine that said you can't stand uh, reality shows, especially <laughs> talent reality shows. If you had to choose one, what show would you choose? <laughs> Ooh, tough question. Um, <laughs> a German reality show? Yeah, maybe, maybe Celebrity Big Brother in Germany. Yeah? 
Is that is that big? Over <laughs> Never there? seen it before, but uh, yeah, it's it's um, fun. it's it's a bit of fun. I was actually on the uh, on the show on the the breakfast show was just taken over as the the host, so maybe she can put a good word in for me. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to learn any German over there? Can you speak German? Uh, yeah. It's funny because you you go over there and try and speak German, and they want to speak English back to you, so they they realise. Yeah. You're not yeah. German, and they think you're American or English, and then it just blows their mind when you're Australian, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, they love it. Yeah. And, and you wrapped up a UK Europe tour. How was that? Yeah, it was amazing. Did that last year. Um, quit my job and went over and played probably about eight or nine shows. Um, actually, it was a year today that the tour actually wrapped up. So, coincidental. Um, but that was awesome. I just went over and took my guitar and um, went with my brother and a friend of mine who's a musician and we he my friend opened for me and we just yeah travelled around and um, had a great old time. And you're also part of a two two person band, Jumbo Mavis. Yeah, uh, still a part of that. Is it really nice to be able to do your solo work and also work in a band environment? Do you prefer one? You know, I guess. What do you like most about having the best of both worlds? Yeah, I love, I really love having the best of both worlds um, yeah. and attacking music from different different sort of perspectives where um, my bandmate, David Ross, that I, that I do the stuff with, we um, obviously come come from different, he's a, more of a producer, so he'll come to me with sounds and ideas some of the time and I'll put lyrics to them or vice versa even. So it's a completely different process and quite like mind opening. It's yeah. great. And you recorded your um, latest track that you've released a little too late with John Castle, yep. um, who I think recorded with Cub Sport and Vance Joy. Yep. How was that? Yeah, great. He's such an awesome guy and um, just like an amazing producer. So really lucky to work with John and um, yeah, really, really lucky to, um, to have come up with the songs that we have. Mm -hmm. so and um, how much sort of outside influence do you have on your work? Um, not a whole lot really. I think when I was with the label I was, um, but before I split with them and now I'm independent again, um, I was getting a little bit of feedback that um, they were trying to, I guess, Germanise my music a bit, but um, now I'm back and can kind of, um, yeah, trod my own path, so it's great. And finally, what else can we expect 2018 and further down the track for you? So uh, the plan is to have more singles and hopefully an EP or an album out by the end of the year. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. All the social medias, I'm guessing Facebook, website, Twitter, everything. It's yep. just Woody P Pitney. Yeah, Woody Pitney. I think Twitter and Instagram are Woody Pitney and uh, Facebook's facebook.com slash Woody Pitney Music. Great. Great. So yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us and, and we really do appreciate your time. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you. I'm only a little too late, a little too late for you.